was a boy who was filled with joy When he met a wicked man in Peking Within the magic lamp he found It really turned his life around Through its genie he could wish for anything Then he met the genie of the ring Once upon a time, in the city of Peking, there was a young boy by the name of Aladdin, whose poor mother, Widow Twanky, owned a small laundry on the outskirts of the city. One day, when Aladdin was helping his mother in the laundry, a strange-looking man with a long pointed beard and flowing gown walked in and exclaimed, Hey, hey, Aladdin! Yeah! I am your long-lost great-uncle Ebenezer! Yeah! I am from a far-flung eastern land, and I am here to make you rich beyond your wildest dreams! Wow! said Aladdin. If I become rich, I could help my poor mother lead a more comfortable life. Anyway, Ebenezer took Aladdin down a winding path that led to a huge cave, Okay, Aladdin, listen. Inside that cave, there is a magic lamp. Yeah, magic lamp. And it's encrusted with diamonds and pearls. I mean, I would go and fetch it myself. But uh, uh, the, 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 the entrance is too small. You, however, Aladdin, my baby, you are the perfect size. All you got to do is to fetch me that lamp and I will ensure that you and your poor widowed mother will be so rich that neither of you will ever have to work again. How about that? Well, that, that sounds great, said Aladdin, but the entrance is blocked off by a rock. How do I enter the cave, Uncle Abanazar? Leave that to me, replied Abanazar. And he produced a large wand and exclaimed in a booming voice, Open Sesame! And suddenly the rock rolled slightly to the right, making just enough room for Aladdin to squeeze into the cave. In you go, dear boy, and don't come back without that lamp, okay? As Aladdin entered the cave, he saw really creepy things like skeletons, giant spiders, and huge bats with large white fangs. <laughs> Hurry it up! yelled Abanazar. Find the lamp and bring it to me at once! All right, replied Aladdin. Keep your hair on. It's dark and spooky in here. Then suddenly, Aladdin noticed a tunnel to the side of the cave. At the end of the tunnel, he found the lamp. Although indeed it did have a few coloured stones embedded in the copper from which it was made, it was obvious to Aladdin that they were fake. As for the lamp itself, it was old and battered. Blimey, I was expecting more than this, said Aladdin to himself, as he walked towards the entrance of the cave with lamp in hand. Aha! Ha! Ha! I see you have the lamp! Now! Now! Pass the lamp to me! Immediately! said Abanaza in a voice that made Aladdin feel slightly alarmed. Your voice has changed, said Aladdin. And why are you so eager to get your hands on this battered old lamp? Can't you wait for me to climb out? How dare you be so insolent, shouted Abanaza. And to teach Aladdin a lesson, he angrily waved his magic wand in the air, shouting the words, Close! Sashumi! The rock that allowed Aladdin to enter closed trapping him in the dark and spooky cave. Poor Aladdin. He sat on a stone and he cried for hours while staring at this battered old lamp. This lamp is filthy, he said, and to keep himself busy, he started to rub the lamp with his sleeve. Then suddenly, Something magic happened. A silver mist started to seep from the spout of the lamp. And in no time at all, it had morphed into a strange-looking creature with huge eyes, golden earrings, and a large hooked nose. Uh, well, thanks a bunch, Aladdin, said the creature. You've woken me from a deep, deep sleep. Who are you? asked Aladdin. Who do you think I am? 
said the creature. I'm the genie of the lamp, aren't I? And unfortunately, your wish is my command. What do you mean? I just told you, your wish is my command. Right, every time you rub the lamp, I pop out and I grant you a wish, don't I? I just hope you don't take advantage of me good nature. Wow, said Aladdin. Can I have any wish at all? Yes, sighed the genie. Oh, Brillo. Well then, um, uh, I wish to be back at the laundry with my mother. Your wish is my command. And in no time, Aladdin found himself back at the laundry with his mother, the lamp still held firmly in his hands. Aladdin explained to his mother what had happened. She was shocked to hear how the wicked Abanaza had left him to perish. Then Aladdin rubbed the lamp, causing the genie to appear once more. Hello, Aladdin. What do you want now? Oh, uh, sorry to trouble you, said Aladdin, but I wanted to introduce you to my mother, Widow Twanky, and to thank you for getting me out of that dark and dingy cave. Hey, no trouble, said the genie. Then he handed Aladdin a beautiful gold ring. Now listen, wear this ring at all times, said the genie. If anyone attempts to steal the lamp, you just rub the ring three times and help will be at hand, all right? Now, as much as it has been nice meeting your mother, I would now like to get back to my kip. Oh no, one more thing before you go, said Aladdin. Uh, I've got another wish. I wish you could transform my mother's small laundry into a huge mansion and grant us enough wealth to make us comfortable for the rest of our lives. The usual then, said the genie. Very well, your wish is, inevitably, my command. And he flicked his fingers, causing the laundry to transform into a huge stylish mansion. And there, on the floor, were several enormous bags of gold coins. Anyway, over the next year, Aladdin and Widow Twanky started mixing with people of great influence. Oh, this is the life! said Widow Twanky, while throwing a lavish dinner party for none other than the ruler of China, Emperor Hee Haw. The Emperor's daughter, Princess Kyoko, was very beautiful indeed. Over the ensuing months, she and Aladdin fell in love and were married at the royal palace. Oh, I'm related to royalty now, said Widow Twanky, as she danced with Emperor Hee Haw, who, like her, had been widowed many years ago. While the celebrations continued at the palace, the wicked Abanaza broke into Aladdin's mansion and stole the magic lamp. <laughs> the lamp is now mine! And Abanaza rubbed the lamp, thus summoning up the genie. Abanaza wickedly asked the genie to turn the mansion back into the old laundry. And then he ordered the genie to bring Aladdin and Widow Twanky to him. <laughs> the lamp is now mine. The genie is under my command. And incidentally, Aladdin, you are rich no more. <laughs> However, a quick thinking Aladdin rubbed his golden ring three times and something magical happened. A beautiful genie appeared. She looked at Aladdin and said, I am the genie of the ring. Master, your wish is my command. Ooh, fab! In that case, I wish that Abanaza turns to stone. Well, that's a, a little harsh, said the genie of the ring. But uh, you are the boss, so here goes. And she took a deep breath, and she blew a gust of air towards Abanaza. No! Who immediately turned to stone. Hey, 
Hey, it's so nice to see you again, my lovely little sugar plum, said the genie of the lamp. You do, darling boy, replied the genie of the ring. Do, 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 do you two know each other? asked Aladdin. Well, of course we do. She's my wife, said the genie of the lamp. And before Aladdin and Widow Twanky could thank the genies, they had both disappeared into the lamp in a flash of green smoke. Taking the ring and the lamp with them, Aladdin and his mum returned to the wedding reception, which continued into the early hours. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad I met you, Kyoko. You are the girl of my dreams, cooed Aladdin to his princess bride. I feel the same, said Kyoko, and I can't wait for our honeymoon in Timbuktu. And it was during the celebrations that Emperor Hee-Haw plucked up the courage to propose to his new love, Widow Twanky. <gasps> oh, Empress Hee-Haw! Oh, it's got a nice twang to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, I accept, Mr. Emperor. Oh, thank you, thank you, said the Emperor. You give both me and the story a very happy Ending. <laughs> Aladdin was a boy who was filled with joy when he met a wicked man in Peking. Within the magic lamp he found, it really turned his life around. Through its genie, he could wish for anything. Then he met the genie of the ring. In Middle England, there lived a pretty young girl called Alice. One day, Alice was walking across a field.